Uh, thank you everyone uh, for attending the, the webinar. Uh, my special warm thanks to Mr. Rao for a very generous uh, introduction. Uh, I also understand that uh, I'm, I'm sort of in between uh, a lovely weekend that comes in, so I promise that I make this presentation short, interesting and uh, memorable for all of you. Uh, today I've been called and it's an honor to speak on what really goes behind an excellent customer experience. Uh, so I want to begin my presentation with talking about the contents, uh, what's the roadmap that looks for us uh, in the next one hour or so. Uh, what I'm going to cover is, I'm going to cover why is it that customer service is, is so important to all businesses, what really constitutes an excellent uh, customer e uh, experience equation. Uh, we're going to stress on a very interesting tool which is mystery shopping, which really is uh, what this webinar is all about and how is it an, uh, an effective tool to enrich the experience of all brands across industries. Uh, talk a little bit about how the process is carried out and the benefits one can see with this exercise. Uh, I have some case studies that I would like to share with you and in the end I'll be much more glad to have uh, direct question and answer sessions with everyone present. Uh, so I'd like to start with the uh, webinar by focusing on why customer experience really matters. Uh, McKinsey did a study recently where they said the most important buying decision of a customer is, is in regards with the perception as to how they are treated. American Express has gone a step further in saying that the majority of the business profitability comes from repeat customers and they are spending one third more than your average new customer. Also, it's very important to know that 68% of customers who do not feel the services of any standards easily switch over. Switch over. You know, in today's age and uh, the economies that we live in, with so many choices and options that are available, there's hardly any switching cost that's available. And customers are, are very, very strict and they do not give brands a chance to actually redeem themselves have they been met with some service failure. In the end, I would just like to say in terms of uh, what uh, Howard Business Review has pointed out that I think we are at a stage where it's just not, in, just not enough to have satisfied customers. The gap between a satisfied customer of a business and an extremely satisfied customer is enough to you know, take off the entire business. So it's very important for, for brands to understand that customer experience is going to be an integral part and one of the biggest differentiators as we move, move along even in India. So what really constitutes an excellent customer experience? Now we at Baird International have been able to define the entire customer experience program into an equation which is nothing but a summation of three different silos. We talk about operational excellence which is nothing but how efficient your operations of your company are running, uh, your standard operating procedures that you've laid out, are they being followed across all verticals, across all locations. It talks about employee commitment, which is nothing more than what, what do your employees really feel about your service standards? Do they really care about the concept? Are they engaged and motivated to give what you want them to give back to their customers? And the end, we talk about customer satisfaction. Are your customers really satisfied with the level of services that they're getting? Are your customers promoting or referring your brand to other members? Are your customers a real brand ambassadors that you want them to be? Now what we do, and this is you know, the basis also of the presentation is how do we ensure that the three different silos are brought together on a common platform to totally validate the entire customer experience program. I'm going to go in, 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 in a bit of detail into all these three pillars, but we're going to focus more on the operational excellence piece, which is primarily mystery shopping. It could be done in person, on phone, on web. There are a lot of other ways to do operational uh, service checks, which could be compliance audits, integrity, and quality as well. On the employee commitment front, we have various surveys that we do for employees of companies through an engagement surveys, through satisfaction programs, focus groups, and face-to-face in-depth interviews as well. And on the customers front, you know, there is a lot of weightage that's been given to the social media. We all know how how aggressive Facebook and Twitter has been for businesses. So there's a lot of data mining that, that can show a lot of value add in terms of data that actual customers have submitted. We have satisfaction surveys, intercept interviews that we do with customers, 
to really understand as to what they feel and perceive the brand and the company to be. But what I'm going to focus more on this on, on this webinar today is a part of operational excellence. How is it that the companies can ensure that they're running a very sustainable service oriented program? One of the one of the tools that I want to talk about today is mystery shopping. Now, mystery shopping is a tool that maps customer experience. What you have on your screen is, is a small definition about what mystery shopping is, but I'll make it simple and try out what, what the whole activity is all about. Mystery shopping is nothing but a, a activity that involves trained shoppers who, who, are, who pose as actual shoppers, but they are in for a mission. Their job is to visit the stores, the dealers of these companies, and evaluate each and every customer touch point and interact with the staff to understand what is it that the company is giving out to its customers and validate if every process is being followed and what are the, are the benefits that can come out from such an exercise. So when we talk about the entire life cycle of, of a customer or a product or a cycle, these are the you know areas where a mystery shopper could validate on. So you see a mystery shopper who, who looks like a detective but he doesn't dress one. Uh, just to ensure that the identities is, is not uh, revealed, uh, gorges each and every business to various touch points. Let's start with the first, which is the entry. This could be a brick and mortar format, or this could be an online format as well. At, right at the entry, the mystery shopper evaluates if the entry to the store or to the location was accessible with the, with the exteriors and the interior signage, the clean area. Once the person is entered, how soon has the person got greeted? who has greeted the person in what format. Uh, after the initial greeting, there is also an aisle check in terms of browsing through the store. Uh, are the merchandise that are there in the stores, are they placed very well? Is the color codes of the apparels in line? Uh, if it's a shopping, uh, if it's an online uh, cart, is the whole experience of browsing through various categories very enriching and informative? If there is any requirement for a shopper to interact with the staff, how courteous and knowledgeable does the staff interaction is? Is the staff overwhelmed uh, with the presence of the mystery shopper? Or is the staff able to gorge and understand the, the various needs and proactively come up with cross-selling solutions as well? Once the purchase has been made, we also evaluate how the experience is in terms of the billing or uh, at, at the cashier desk. Uh, the speed of delivery, the timeliness of, of the purchase, is very, very important to the entire experience program. Not to forget, there could be a lot of interactions post the sales and or the purchase, a lot of after sales support that's required, this after sales delivery. How has the entire experience been when the customer who's who's already bought a product or a service comes back to you for, for, for any other any other requirements as well? So these are the entire life cycle chain uh, you know which which mystery shopper evaluates to every brand. Or, or, or an organization. Now I wanted to bring about uh, this slide which talks about the difference between a market research and a mystery shopping. You know, a lot of my clients when I pitch this concept uh, you know, tell me that you know, they all, all of them have a sizable marketing budget and they do invest into some kind of a market research program. So they tell me that you know, why is it that we really require a mystery shopping and how is it different from a typical market research program? Well the answer is very while market research is an excellent tool in terms of finding out how your customers feel in a certain way, mystery shopping is the only tool which tells you why does a customer feel in a particular way. If the customer is happy, why is it that the customer is happy when he visits the store? If the customer wasn't so happy and there was a fall of services, where was the fall of services? So it's, it's much more objective based as to we don't have any perceptions driven. The mystery shopper has been told to go there, who's on a particular cause, it's an unbiased, neutral opinion that the mystery shopper has. So the data, the, the data that comes through is much more measurable compared to the opinion that comes through a, through a market research program. So moving on, I want to talk about how does the entire process work. Now, what I've done in my presentation is that I've given a layout of actually how this process works. We will then go into detail on each and every uh, you know, category and we'll talk more about how it works. But just to broadly define the entire process flow of a mystery shopping program, it starts with the companies having certain objectives. 
which they want to achieve or some issues that they, they have countered and they want a solutions to that. Uh, they contact the mystery shopping company. A mystery shopping company then sits together with the client and designs a customized tailor-made program which is basically made to achieve those objectives which they would have started with. Mystery shopping company once after understanding the scope or the requirement of the program then does the most important thing which is recruiting and training the right mystery shoppers. Once the shoppers are trained, they are sent in the field to evaluate the stores, those vans. They come back with their analysis in a very objective based report. The information is then analyzed and then presented to the client. And through those recommendations, companies look to enrich their entire program. Now let's go into detail of each and every step and see how it works. In terms of client objectives, there are many client there are many objectives which the client would like to get solved with. One could be that you know we've come up with various promotion schemes at our stores or, or at our at our company level. Are these really working out? Am I, I are we seeing the return on investments on our marketing? How are customers actually getting treated? Uh, is the staff, the front end staff at the stores really following the laid out procedures? Are they really greeting in time? Are they wearing the right uniform? Are they, are they appearing as the right brand ambassadors? If there is a need for a training program, where is it that I really actually require a need? Could it be a soft skill training requirement or could it be a more technical requirement? Is the training program working or is it in order is it, or is it in sync with our objectives? How do I compare myself with the competitors? So, these could be some of the issues that a brand or a company would have and a market research company would then sit together with the, with the company and design a program tailor-made to their requirements. The number one thing of designing is very clearly identifying what the goals or the standard operating procedures are in place for a company. If the company does not have a standard operating procedures in place, then it's very important to start with creating those into some kind of a process manual which then needs to be laid out across all verticals. The translation of, of these objectives uh, of these standards have to happen in a very objective based questionnaire which again is not perception driven which is fact based opinionated. There could be a lot of use of realistic scenarios, uh, recruitment and training of the right uh, mystery shopper is very important and then reporting this feedback accurately not only in terms of actionable feedback, but also in terms of speed and timeliness of this delivery. Okay, let's bring on to the topic as to why is it, uh, what goes on in terms of recruiting and training of shoppers. So, I like to take a minute and tell the audience, uh, you know, who are mystery shoppers. Now, mystery shopping is, is a very na naive concept. It's not a very known concept. So, I just want to, you know, have some time to discuss who are mystery shoppers or rather who can be mystery shoppers. Uh, the answer is everyone. Anyone and everyone can be mystery shoppers. Everyone on this call today uh, can be mystery shoppers. Uh, what are we looking for when it comes to mystery shoppers? There are certain characteristics that are very important of being a mystery shopper. I just want to name some of them. Very important to have a keen eye for detail. Definitely the person should be an active shopper to really understand the difference between a good experience versus a bad experience. Presence of mind is very critical. Uh, we, we definitely test individuals in terms of some kinds of memory retention tests. Uh, this is based in terms of keeping the logic in mind and also how much can you gather in a half an hour visit. So it's very important to have the ability to see and hear and then capture that feedback. But most importantly, I think the, the most important ability for mystery shopper is to, to hide the identity that they are here for a purpose. So that's one of the key challenges uh, you know, that mystery shoppers face is to how to do an effective job, how to go into a store, how to get the names and the basic details right, how to ensure that an audio uh, conversation is securely recorded, how to ensure that you know, photos are, are clicked of a store without actually you know, uh, ensuring that your, your identity is, is kept secret. That's why the term, that's why there's much mysterious ways of doing this. That's why the, the term mystery shopping has been born, uh, keeping that in mind. Now you'll be wondering, where do you get such people? Well, you know, it's, the answer is very simple. It's all there. All of us, like I said, can be, can be mystery shoppers. So it's, it's, it's very easy and the, the people are all available. 
some some mystery shopping companies do look at uh, portals like Mokri and other job posting sites. Uh, there are targeted ads which are placed uh, to get certain kind of individuals. But the most important thing that works for a mystery shopping company is referrals. You know, once you have a strong mystery shopper and who understands the concept and who who gets rewarded in time, who who understands the power of of this of this initiative to give feedback to global brands. They are the ones who would refer it to their like-minded people, and that's how the business and and the databases grow. On. Very important is the training and certification as to what goes on in terms of making sure that these people who have come on board as mystery shoppers do also have the right certification. Uh, various online training modules are available. Um, what we try and do that in every industry we have certain specific modules of industry-wise that the people are supposed to pass so that they are certified those industry uh, activities. We have various memory retention tests because it's very important for a mystery shopper to, to not only capture what he sees but also with the presence of mind uh, interact with the staff and come back which normally happens in, in about 24 hours to again give us a detailed analytical report as to how the entire experience was. And obviously once the project has been decided, we have very specific test of the project. Basically we try and test if the mystery shopper has understood the brand uh, which the person is going to evaluate in terms of its culture, in terms of its uh, environment, in terms of its standard operating procedures. We also train our mystery shoppers to not only give data which is in a very objective format, but also train them to give them in-depth narrative. So if it's a good experience that the person has, then the person also gives in some in-depth narratives. For example, if, if the checkout area was not as per the liking, so why was it not as per the liking? There would be an in-depth narrative basically to substantiate the positives and negatives of the experience. So you may must you must be wondering now once the shopper does this, how does this data actually look like to the end client? Uh, I have some slides that I want to show how does the data look like. This is a, a typical snapshot of a report that will go in. The first half would have very objective based questions which will have a no and yes answer and then there will be an open ended box with, in terms of capturing the verbatim of how the experience was when the person was measuring these, these clear objectives at the store or at the dealership level. So this gives a lot of you know, insights to the to the company in terms of what was good, what was not good, how the entire experience has been laid out. Uh, that has a lot of value added for, for, the, for, the, for the customers. This is the way in which the data could come through in terms of reporting and graphics. A uh, lot of data gets analyzed and presented to the clients, uh, which makes it much easier for the for the end clients to make judgment, to make recommendations on their overall program. Uh, mystery shopping company not only does does the data collection bid, but they also you know go a step further in terms of analyzing the data and bringing up key recommendations or some some meeting initiatives which will make a lot of difference for the companies or the brands. So that's kept in mind in terms of making sure that the recommendations are very you know tailor made and very to the point to the various sections that the mystery shopping program would capture. So I'd like to take a minute to discuss what could be the benefits of a mystery shopping exercise. Now there are various benefits that comes through. Surely the biggest benefit to the shopper is the great remuneration that they, that they get in terms of doing this exercise and also the fact that they get the power to evaluate global brands who already set some, some benchmarking standards across the globe. So the, the clear, the, really the power is with the evaluators to make a difference in terms of our, our service attributes, uh, to make a better society in terms of uh, you know higher service deliveries. But in terms of the client, I think some of the biggest benefits that we've laid out comes in, in the form of standardization, standardize, standardizing the entire operational processes, which definitely has a positive impact both on the top line as well as on the bottom line. Uh, you know, we normally see that companies who are not so organized would have various pillars which are not in sync with each other, which ensures that 
the revenue targets are not probably met and the brand image somewhere takes a beating. What we've been able to see with the mystery shopping program is once we've aligned the, the processes and we've validated them over a period of time, there seems to be a tremendous amount of synergy that arrives to various individual pillars and ensures that the organization is seen in sync with their image, their revenues are much more stable, uh, increased towards the end of the program and overall they speak one language. So the uniformity plays a very important role not only in terms of cost cutting but in also in terms of increasing top line through cost stability. Another very important benefit that comes straight away from an exercise of mystery shopping is how your employees are incentivated and what kind of a reward program you know you can you can judge for them. Now when I when I speak to my clients, uh, you know, and, and once they see once they start seeing the data of the mystery shopping, you know, a lot of my clients uh, tell me that you know there are a lot of uh, negative sentiments that have come through. Uh, because of the mystery shopping piece and uh, you know there is a lot of people who have not been happy because they've been scored less uh, and there is some amount of negativity that has come through through a program. My, my advice to all of them is to look at mystery shopping as a tool which not only highlights the negative points about, about the employer, or about the store or about the upkeep but to highlight and celebrate the small successes which companies derive through this program across all levels. So, you know, if, if, an, if, a, if an employee has been rated very high in terms of service delivery or if a store has been getting consistent results basis as upkeep and, and, and product information, then there has to be a substantial reward program that needs to be tied in to these scores of this activity. This definitely helps in terms of linking the right performance with incentives. So our methodology always has been to pay for, uh, pay for performance. So mystery shopping is a great tool in terms of really linking performance with the right incentives. It helps you identify who are the right front-end people in your team which needs to be promoted, which needs which need to be uh, invested more in terms of higher training and responsibilities. And overall, this has a very positive effect in terms of the entire employee motivation. Once this starts seeing the benefit of this exercise, uh, on, a, on a normal level, on a regular level and they see that you know, if an employee who does better or goes out of the way in terms of giving out the right experience does get monetary rewarded as well as rewarded on a non-monetary basis in terms of rewards and recognitions that goes a long way in terms of building the right engagement, right atmosphere in the team. So my advice has always been that while the mystery shopping reports are very critical, they should be looked uh, with more positivity and there are a lot of positive benefits that can come through uh, even with the employees. Needless to say that this is a great you know, activity which really helps to gain your customer satisfaction because in the end whatever you do helps and you know increases the customer satisfaction and enriches their entire experience. They understand you better because you've been doing this for some time, you understand where your, your, your loopholes are and you try and correct them. We appreciate that. There are a lot of times when you know, you're able to win back and retain your existing customers. We saw in the start of my slide where that one third of profits come in from existing customers. So it's really imperative for, for, for companies to focus more in terms of repeat purchases and to retain existing customers. You know, customer satisfaction is a great tool uh, if you do it right and you convert your customers to your brand ambassadors, then they are, they are the ones who promote and refer your brand to the outside world. So what are, these are the benefits uh, that come through uh, you know, to do this exercise uh, about mystery shopping. Uh, I'm going to focus uh, more time in terms of uh, not talking about some, some key retail studies uh, that we've done. Uh, these are case studies which are for various industries. Uh, I thought it would be more relevant for me uh, to bring in a retail case study and I'm going to show uh, the value add that a retail case study has had, uh, how is the impact been for, for the clients and what is it that a normal businesses uh, can see the benefit uh, which can come through from a, re from a retail program. 
uh, some time back, uh, a, a Fortune 500 a retailer contacted us and they had certain issues that they were trying to counter. Uh, you know, a normal retail format has high staff turnover uh, due to the, the market that you are in, in terms of uh, you know, attrition and employee turnover. Uh, another big factor which uh, doesn't help profitability is that sales over a period of time have been uh, were, were very flat for, for this retailer. So basically, they, we, these were the challenges that they had, and, and we approached them through through our ECX formula to see if what is it that we could you know uh, bring on the table for them in terms of they taking some direct impact and direct benefit from this program. A uh, couple of things uh, we were able to you know give them solutions with. Uh, we got into a, a contract with them. We said you know mystery shopping is not an exercise that can you know, give you results in, in, in the next one month or two months. Uh, it needs to evolve over a period of time. Uh, it's very important for, for, for employees or brands to inculcate the, the entire experience uh, uh, as part of the culture, uh, which does not come through in a short period of time. So there is some amount of uh, patience that's required from the, from the top management, from the senior leaders. Uh, so we were able to convince them that we need to do this study for a minimum period of 18 months uh, wherein our, 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 our study was focused more in terms of doing mystery shopping uh, across all their stores uh, in India uh, and also in Middle East. Uh, also with these uh, mystery shopping store you know, activities, we were also wanting to complement this with our employee satisfaction surveys which we would do in conjunction with a mystery shopping exercise. Uh, it took us some time for them to you know, create these budgets. Uh, we got them on board and we started doing this for 18 months program. Uh, clearly, uh, as we did this program, the first things that we started seeing is that initially for the three to six months, uh, things were not moving. The, the scores remained quite consistently flat, but once you know, the employees started seeing that yes, it's a regular activity. Uh, the companies were taking initiative in terms of promoting the right people. Uh, companies were taking initiative in terms of, you know, making sure that the customer's time in the stores, uh, you know, were, were spent well. Uh, they were able to increase the customer's time at the store. They clearly started seeing the benefits uh, in terms of reducing their employee turnover to about over a 10% uh, basis in a period of 18 months. A uh, lot of employee activity that we were able to do uh, was in terms of monthly performance initiatives through the reports that we were able to give uh, these stores on a monthly level. We were able to identify, um, you know, the most uh, the service star concept of the front end employees. We were able to convince the company that there has to be substantial reward program that needs to be tied, and not only in terms of monetary, but also in terms of a of a platform needs to be created. So every month they would then ensure that the person who got the maximum results in terms of customer uh, feedback or uh, you know through our mystery shopping program uh, was given uh, you know an employee of the month kind of a platform where the photos of the individual were, were published uh, in, in their internal campaigns. Uh, you know we came in through these uh, regular meetings as well uh, in terms of sharing the accolades with the employees. So clearly. What we were able to do was to induce a very positive, uh, you know, atmosphere in the work culture. There were some things that the employees were looking forward to at the end of every month. So they were actually anticipating a report to come through, and it created a, sen a sense of positive competition uh, within the employees, uh, and, and in a very positive way in terms of competing with each other to ensure that you know the scores, uh, the individual scores, were at the highest. And I, I have to admit, the company also had to contribute in a way and they kept their promise. They were very aggressive in terms of their campaign. They did it for 18 months and they spent a lot of time and resources into this benefit. One, one major uh, you know, uh, highlight that happened through this activity was why the focus was more in terms of ensuring that the customer experience at the store was high. Uh, we, we saw some gaps in the program that there wasn't much attempt made in terms of building the loyalty program within, within the customers. So we had a survey where we focused on some scenarios which, which ensured that the employees are promoting uh, you know, uh, the loyalty membership programs at the stores. 
and then another terrific uh, effect, and that was uh, you know uh, a hidden uh, objective that that came through during this program that 20 percent of of increase happened in the loyalty program after they introduced uh, the mystery shopping benefits uh, across their stores. So that was a big you know positive that happened uh, in terms of of the top line. Uh, you know we we were shared that in you know, over a period of consistent amount of work happened in an 18 months program and they were able to gorge a 3 to 5 percent increase on their top line straight away uh, after doing a mystery shopping exercise uh, to ensure that the employees were happy, the customers were getting what they wanted and overall the business had an increase of 3 to 5 percent. So that was a great win uh, that happened at the retail front. Uh, so normally mystery shopping is always associated with the retail format. Uh, that's also true as you know the, the majority of the business do come from from the retail uh, side uh, but there are all in fact there are every industry that is customer facing and that has uh, customers as front end or back end where there's a lot of engagement can do a mystery shopping program. Uh, one such case study that comes to my mind is on the automotive side. Now automotive side industry has a lot of unique challenges. Uh, there was this one uh, company that came to us with a challenge that they were not sure that you know uh, their dealers that they had were actually complying to the threshold price that you know, the company set. Let me give you an example of how it works. Uh, you know, normally when you have a automobile company or various dealers, you every model price that is available is being given a threshold price that you know you cannot go beyond that price which hurts the profitability. Uh, however, in terms of a volume incentive program, every automobile company would then develop some kind of a volume program for the dealers at the end of the year, which is based on the number of cars that they are sold. Uh, what um, the company had uh, you know, uh, issues with is they were not certain, but they felt that some dealers were selling the cars before below the threshold price just to ensure that they qualify for the year-long volume bonus uh, that the companies are giving. So this is one of the issues that they had, and and they wanted uh, you know uh, Bear International uh, to come through. Uh, so they suggested why don't we contact a mystery shopping company who would help us? How is it that you know we can we can come up with a robust plan or a program which will ensure that uh, their compliance and, 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 and integrity is in place when it comes to the dealers. So uh, what, did, what did Bear International do as a mystery shopping company is in, in close consultation with the client, we developed some kind of a price break audit uh, which, which was uh, you know, focused on the fact that our trained uh, mystery auditors would uh, go to these locations uh, as you can see in the graph and they would try and and break the price barrier for the X particular model. So they had a particular price range in mind. Their entire objective was uh, to visit these dealers, try and negotiate uh, any price which could break the threshold price that was given by the automobile company to us. Uh, that that involved a lot of strong negotiation. So we had to select mystery shoppers who are very uh, you know, automobile enthusiasts who were who would carry a profile that they would be they would be uh, you know value for money customers who would want the maximum value. Uh, they would be ready to buy a car of of x amount of of, of uh, rupees. So we had to select uh, a certain profile accordingly. Uh, it was an all India initiative. Uh, so we had to select profile in all the cities across India. Uh, send it to these dealers uh, and not only negotiate with them what's required, but also record the conversation in terms of proof uh, through a secret audio clip uh, that could be done with various devices, could be done on a mobile phone, could be done on a recording device uh, and then bring that information back uh, to Bear International which, which you know, collects all this data on a central recipient repository system and, and throws in all this feedback and analysis uh, to the client. Uh, what, 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 what we were able to do uh, through this program is uh, we were able to identify, uh, you know, dealers that that were non-compliant, that that were not doing the things right when it came to this activity, 
And in a period of 12 months, we were able to give them a very robust incentive program that they could use with their dealers, uh, which would ensure that you know the, the right dealers were getting promoted well. Uh, so what the bad apples, as we speak in our language, uh, were dealt with uh, very strictly, and the bonuses were not paid for. And a more clearer and a rewarding program was, was set forward uh, in terms of uh, actually you know compensating the the, the right dealers uh, who were not part of this process earlier due to these unfair practices, but really you know making sure that the company's money spent on this activity was was more right, was more uh, uh, you know true. Uh, so this was a great uh, you know activity we planned. Uh, which had a lot of benefits uh, that came in uh, for the automobile company. Um, so, so that was my presentation uh, about uh, uh, mystery shopping. Uh, like I said, I, I, I do not want to take much time. I know it's the weekend and everyone's excited about it. Uh, but I, I hope you were able to understand uh, you know, a very unique uh, concept about mystery shopping. And uh, what is it that, and how is it that uh, you know this concept uh, is done? Uh, I would just like to summarize that uh, you know mystery shopping. When I when I meet my clients, uh, both in the Middle East and as well as in India, uh, you know everyone acknowledges that it's it's a great concept. But uh, you know every company has a marketing budget. Uh, but you know uh, sometimes the answer that we get is that we've not planned for such an expense uh, this year. We probably like to budget this uh, for the next year. So one thing that I always tell them is, is that you know don't think of mystery shopping as a tool of an expense. Uh, it is an investment, and it should be treated alike. Uh, you know, over a period of time, uh, we have data that can uh, that can convince uh, industry leaders across segments that uh, you know if you invest the right amount of time and resources into building uh, a, a unique service delivery model. It definitely pays back in terms of profits uh, on the top line, in terms of increasing sales, and also in terms of bottom line, in terms of ensuring that you know, operations run much more effectively uh, through a lot of cost-effective measures. Uh, your employees are happy; they don't need you don't need to hire new employees. So you know there's a lot of savings in terms of hiring cost. Uh, they they don't need to be trained every time because they are in themselves motivated to do much more. So there's a lot of Cost that gets cut if you do this right in terms of operations. Uh, this is a slide that I always close on, which, and this is an actual study that uh, we've we've done with with various industries uh, across the globe, uh, where where we we've, we've consistently shown them that a 20% you know shop base point increase on your average shop score has a direct correlation to about 5% on your sales growth for that for the store. So this clearly goes to show that you know the investments that we make in terms of building a, a, a lucrative customer experience program has a lot of benefits in terms of profitability, in terms of ensuring that you know your companies are the right place to work, where you value your your customer your your customers, you listen to your employees, and you you can give back to the society as well. So. That's about it. That's the end of my presentation. Um, a little bit about myself. I, uh, like Mr. Ram mentioned, I look after Bear International. Uh, Bear International has been a global leader when it comes to customer research. Uh, we, we, one of the biggest uh, companies that you can see uh, that we do work for mystery shopping, uh, you know, activities. We work with various uh, clients uh, across the globe. Uh, we are present in eight continents. Uh, I look after the India, Middle East, Africa region from Mumbai. Uh, it will be a pleasure uh, to interact with all of you. Uh, the website that you can go in in case you want to register yourself as, as a mysterious uh, mystery shopper. The website is uh, www.bearinternational.com. Uh, my personal email ID is svardia, that's S-V-E-R-D-I-A at bearinternational.com. Uh, it's a pleasure. I thank the opportunity that CI has given us and Bear, uh, you know, to do this. I hope uh, you know the concept was interesting, and uh, I look forward to have uh, any interactions on email. And uh, I'd be more than glad to have uh, a session of question and answers 
that I can share my points and probably learn from each one of you as well uh, as we go along. So thank you everyone and uh, I'll open up for questions now.